Uh, hello everybody, welcome to our talk Fridge Lock Preventing Data Thefts on Suspended Linux with use of a minimum encryption. My name is Fabian Franz and I am going to present this topic today. Um, let's first quickly uh, state what the problem is. Uh, we have more and more devices. These uh, devices contain more and more confidential user or corporate data. And of course, these devices can get easily stolen by some attacker, which is of course bad. Uh, normally, this problem is tackled with uh, full disk encryption. Um, however, this full disk encryption is only effective if the device is fully switched off, which is normally inconvenient, and we believe many users do not do this. Um, attacks on full disk encryption, for example, um, are cold boot attacks, um, attacks via DMR, uh, enabled buses, and JTAG, of course, and some examples for content artifacts which can be present in RAM are listed here on the right-hand side. Of course, a full disk encryption key, but uh, furthermore, of course, um, if Firefox is currently loaded, uh, the password store will just be present in RAM, and this is also true for files uh, which are currently opened. Uh, these may also reside in RAM. Uh, countermeasures, as they have been discussed so far uh, in academia, um, are, for example, that the FDE as a as a Full disk encryption key is outsourced or contained inside CPU or GPU registers. Uh, most prominently, there's the approach Trezor, which was presented at USENIX uh, qu already quite some time ago. Um, however, these approaches only protect the full disk encryption key, not other sensitive data present in RAM. Um, Code injection via DMA attacks is known to circumvent uh, these, at least Trezor. And uh, the misuse of registers may impact usability of the overall system. Uh, hardware mitigations like uh, AMD SEV and Intel multi-key total memory encryption require specialized hardware and to our knowledge this has only been deployed on server hardware and is not available uh, to end user devices um, even if it, if it would be also a quite good solution. Uh, a solution which can be almost deployed on every system is uh, and which is a good trade-off, we think, is suspend time memory encryption, where we just encrypt the RAM before the system is going to sleep. This doesn't uh, require specific hardware support. Uh, we can benefit from hardware accelerated ciphers so that it's that fast that the user will not even notice it. Um, however, it is only effective if the device is sleeping when uh, it's stolen by an attacker, but we think it's a good, a good trade-off. Um, let's dig a little bit deeper into suspend time memory encryption. Um, existing approaches are HypnoGuard and Freeze Encrypt, which has already been uh, discussed in academia. Um, however, we find that these uh, approaches are foremost of academic nature, and almost always are implemented as a Linux kernel patch as proof of concept. Um, the problem with this patch is that it needs to be uh, maintained uh, to be widely usable. Um, preferably, the author would provide some kind of binary kernels that are ready for install, but say you have to always recompile them because of all the security updates of coming in. Otherwise, you would make the users uh, to patch and compile the kernels on their own. It would be beneficial to have this in the mainline Linux kernel so that the Linux kernel devs um, take care of this, but unfortunately, this is not the case so far. However, uh, the Linux kernel maintainers may make you to create some study or uh, impact study before they let you integrate such a system into the Linux kernel with massively impacts uh, the memory management, uh, how it happens on the Linux operating system. Um, let's quickly replace uh, our attacker model before we uh, go into the details of how FritchLock is implemented. Um, we have already scratched the surface on this. Uh, we assume an attacker, attacker which possesses a suspended device and is, uh, he's able to perform any attack besides breaking crypto. Um, 
For your notice, this also includes uh, breaking all hardware protections that can be bypassed. So we do not have, we have to rely on a TPM or Intel SGX, uh, which has been uh, quite often explored uh, since the advent of Spectrid in the past years. Um, but this is a, a great exception. Uh, the attacker is not allowed to give the device back, e.g. there are no even made bit attacks. If we would allow uh, something like this, uh, we would we have other problems to solve. Um, let's go quickly through the design of uh, fridge lock. Uh, fridge lock is based usually on the freeze and encrypt uh, approach, which uh, has already been marked on the previous slides. Um, it uh, encrypts user space pages uh, of running processes uh, and throws away the disk encryption key on suspense so that there are less artifacts in RAM and attacker can make use of. Uh, what's new? Uh, for fridge lock um, uh, in regarding to HypnoGuard and uh, Freeze Encrypt is it that it's implemented as a Linux kernel module uh, with a user space component and uh, this has the advantage that uh, we have more degrees of freedom and more debugging uh, capabilities in user space uh, so that it's easier to extend and even more the implementation is a loadable Linux kernel module allows for reusing subsystems like uh, the dynamic kernel module loading and um, we have also uh, implemented as new feature that we uh, can clear IO caches of the operating system to get further rid of artifacts. Let's go through the implementation of uh, fridge lock. The kernel module um, hooks into two uh, into at two points into the Linux kernel. Uh, the first hook uh, is called before pres uh, before suspend uh, by the Linux power management system. Uh, we use this to spawn our user space helper program, which prefers a temporary file system. On this temporary file system, uh, stage two process is copied and spawned. And this stage two process goes directly to sleep and waits there or until resume. And uh, its whole purpose is to um, unlock the system uh, when the device resumes. Um, when we have given back control to the kernel and our processes are frozen, um, a second hook kicks in. And this uh, hook is triggered by the kernel from uh, the device driver API where we have registered a fake device. And the cool thing here is that this hook is called after all user space processes are, pro are frozen. So we can safely encrypt user space processes because they are not running anymore. Wipes the full disk encryption key because no user space process is doing disk IO anymore and erase the file system caches and then do the CPU hold in the end. Uh, the encryption in Flitch lock is implemented using the AES XTS uh, cipher, which is hardware accelerated on most platforms. As we utilize the kernel crypto API, we do not re-implement the all crypto. We use tested primitives of the Linux kernel, which are also maybe accelerated by using uh, the AES and structural set extensions of Intel. Uh, we utilize the physical pages as initialization vector for AES XTS, uh, which we think is the uh, same to do as we see some similarities to disk encryption here. And we are only skipping a few selected processes, um, most, like, also most notably uh, the ones uh, marked with PF no freeze, but these are kernel threads or parts of the operating system anyways, uh, and some processes in intermediate states uh, for example, after fork, and for most, of course, our pass key and resume process, the stage two process, which takes care of uh, uh, getting the pass key from the user and giving it back to the Linux kernel, and also do a few uh, helper things that we do not, so that we do not have to implement anything in the Linux kernel module. Regarding performance. We have tested a fridge lock on a Dell XPS laptop uh, with a CPU which is capable of doing IS, uh, which has this IS knee instruction set extensions. And um, it obtains 16 gigabyte, gigabyte of RAM, which we think is uh, still an up-to-date setup. 
and we tested three cases. First and foremost, a high load case where basically all RAM is occupied by user space processes. And we can see that in this setup, the encryption overhead, just the in-place encryption using A60S is taking roughly about 1.3 seconds to encrypt. And the cache clean of file system artifacts from RAM takes uh, adds up with this delay to two seconds, uh, which we think is absolutely far, perfectly fine as the user is going to uh, as, the, as the device is going to suspend anyway and the user is not going to use it. Average load is a use case where only half, uh, roughly half of the RAM is uh, occupied and the mint system is uh, quite stripped down uh, where only uh, very, very, very few um, processes are running. I think it, the system uses 500 MB or so 500 megabytes or so is used by the user space, I think something like this. Um, we haven't mentioned resume time overhead here, but resume time overhead can uh, is nearly the same as this, uh, despite the cache clean. The cache clean is not uh, present, of course, in the resume phase. Um, this is quite nice. Uh, the kernel reconstructs all caches lazily uh, on resume. Open issues. Um, Certain uh, data cannot be reliably encrypted, uh, for example, device drivers uh, as a keyboard device. If the user has entered some keyboard just before uh, some passphrase just before suspend, it may still be present in the driver buffer. Um, our kernel module has unfortunately um, to make use of some unexported symbols for memory management using the KO Zims API, which can be used to resolve function addresses in kernel modules and uh, this causes that we may currently not detect kernel API changes as this is a mechanism not uh, guided by the compiler. Uh, we could employ additional tooling to catch these errors uh, reliably, but preferable would um, be to um, yeah, make the kernel devs or ask the kernel devs for exporting these uh, functions so that we can make a nice integration uh, into the Linux kernel when we cannot include uh, suspend time memory encryption as a whole into the kernel. Uh, there are also some uh, rare stability issues where the kernel apparently at still attempts to access a disk during uh, resume, um, which cannot work because the disk is uh, suspended and the FDE key is not available, so every I.O. operation will get stuck. I'm now done with my presentation. Thank you for your attention. I'm now here in chat or something else, whatever the conference organizers present, uh, prepared for this um, to answer your questions. Thank you again.